Okay, for this De Morphe theorem, um, it say that if you have um, cosine theta plus i sine theta raised to the power of n, then this number will equal to cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. Now, I put a comma here because there is a condition for this. This is true if n is an integer. We need to know how to apply this theorem. After we have this, then you also take notes that if I have cosine theta minus i sine theta to the power of n. For this one, cosine theta and cosine negative theta, they are the same. And negative sine theta equals to sine negative theta and to the power of n. As long as n is an integer, then we can write it as cosine n negative theta plus i sine n negative theta if n is an integer. In other words, this one can be written as cosine n theta minus i sine n theta. Sine theta plus i cosine theta to the power of n. This is usually not equal to uh, cos sine n theta plus i cosine n theta. Okay, this is usually not true. Using the Morph theorem, this is the De Morph theorem, we can get whether plus or minus is still good. But it must be cos plus i sine or cos minus i sine. We also know that e i theta equals to cosine theta plus i sine theta. In this case, e i theta to the power of n equals to, using the Morph theorem, e i n theta, if n is an integer. If n is not an integer, this may not be true. Right. Now, using this Euler formula, this is called Euler's formula, we let theta equals to pi. What will you have? You have e i pi equals to cosine pi plus i sine pi. Cosine pi equals to negative 1, and this is equals to 0. That's why we have e i pi equals to negative 1. And sometimes people like to write this e i pi plus 1 equals to 0. For numbers, 0 and 1 are two simplest numbers. Uh, i is an eventual number, pi is about 3.141589, e is about 2.7182818, but they all unite together and become this, this so-called uh, most beautiful equation in the world. Let z half plus square 3 over 2 i. We are asked to find what is the modulus and what is the argument. In general, if z equals to x plus i y, where x y are real numbers, modulus of z will be equal to square root of x square plus y square. An argument of z, many people will say that uh, is arctangent y over x. And this is not true in general. What we can say is, if argument equals to theta, then tangent theta equals to y of x, provided that x not equals to 0. Example, 1 and 1. This is 1 plus i. Argument of z, or maybe of z1, is equal to, clearly, this is pi over 4. So this is pi over 4. So you can say that this is arctangent 1 over 1. It is nothing wrong here. However, if we consider z2, which is opposite here, negative 1 and negative 1. Argument of z2, which is equal to negative 1 plus or minus i, clearly in this case it will be equal to negative 3 over 4. Okay, But if you calculate arctangent negative 1, which is a y, over negative 1, this is again give you um, 1, which is pi over 4. So you can't say the argument z2 equals to pi over 4. So in, in general, this is not true. Whenever you have fraction, the mean nominator cannot be equal to 0. Example, this is 1, and this is z3. z3 equals to 0 plus i. The argument of this z3, argument of z3 will be equal to pi over 2. If you sub in this, this is arctangent 1 over 0. And 1 over 0 is undefined. 
That's why you can't get anything from here. You also can't say that tangent of 90 degree equals to 1 over 0. So this is not true if x equals to 0. Okay, we go back to this one. And we know that this is simply square root of 1 over 2 squared plus square root 3 over 2 squared. Note that when we do this, we do not include i. When we do this, that is only y. There's no included uh, i. And this is equal to square root of 1 over 4 plus 3 over 4, and this is equal to 1. In order to get this accurately, I will suggest that you have a simple drawing so that we know which quadrant is fault in. Okay? So for this case, half, this is square root 3 over 2. This is imagined part, this is the real part. Now, for this case, we know that this is 3 over 2, this is 1 over 2. So this will be equal to a 60 degree. So example 1 is pretty simple. You're asked to find what is this. Z is equal to half plus, and this is cosine pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. Z to the power of 6 will equal to cosine pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3 to the power of 6. Using the Morph Theorem, this will be equal to cosine 6 pi over 3 plus i sine 6 pi over 3, which means that this is cosine 2 pi and this is i sine 2 pi. The answer is equal to 1. In fact, if this modulus z equals to 1, it means that it will be on the a circle which the center is equal to 0 and radius equals to 1. So this is uh, z, okay? So what you have here is this will be z squared. z squared. And you have a z3 here. Then later on, z4 and uh, z5. And this will be equal to z6 again. If you join all these, it will form a nice regular hexagon. z6 equals to 1. What happened to z2015? Sin2015 is 3. 3, 5, multiplied with 6 plus 5. So I can write this as z to the power of 2, 0, 1, 5. But 2, 0, 1, 5 is equal to 6 to the power of 3, 3, 5, multiplied with z to the power of 5. And this will give me 1, so this is just equal to z to the power of 5. And from here, we know that it will go back to this, where this is equal to um, negative pi over 3. So this will equal to cosine negative pi over 3 plus i sine negative pi over 3. And this will equal to half minus i square root 3 over 2. And that's the answer for z to the power of 2, 0, 1, 5. The next question. Half plus i square root 3 over 2 to the power of 2, 0, 1, 5 plus half minus i square root 3 over 2 power 2, 0, 1, 5. Now we note that z to the power of n conjugate will equal to z n z conjugate to the power of n this is the conjugate of each other this remains the same and this will be equal to the conjugate of this value since this is conjugate of this value and we know that this is equal to half minus i squared 3 over 2 and this is half minus i squared 3 over 2 conjugate the conjugate for this will equal to half plus i squared 3 over 2 and therefore the answer is very nice it's just an integer and it's 1 cosine 5 theta plus i sine 5 theta cosine 2 theta i, I sine 2 theta this is simple okay I can say that this one is cosine i to the power of 5. We always use a Demorphia and say that cos i sine theta to the power of n will equal to cos n theta plus i sine n theta, provided that n is n integer. So this will be equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of 2. So what we have is cosine theta plus i sine n theta to the power of 7. And this will give me cosine 7 theta plus i sine 7 theta. Now we mean want to write the tangent as sine over cosine. So this will be sine theta over cosine theta. Uh, we multiply each term by cosine theta. So I have cosine theta minus i sine 
theta. This will give me plus i sine theta to the power of negative 5. On the other hand, this will give me cosine theta plus i sine negative 5. Cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of negative 10. So cosine negative 10 theta plus i sine negative 10 theta. And therefore, this is equal to cosine 10 theta minus i sine 10 theta. That is for question B. Sine 60 degree plus i cosine 60 degree to the power of 10. Note that uh, the Moore theorem, the Moore theory only applies if this is cos plus i sine. If this is sine plus i cos, we need to change it to become cosine 30 degree plus i sine 30 degree. Cosine 300 degree plus i sine 300 degree. This is equal to cosine 60 and this equals to negative i sine 60 degree. And this is equal to half minus i squared 3 over 2. 1 plus i squared 2, 1 minus i squared 2 to the power of n, 2 cosine n pi over 4. 1 plus i squared 2 is equal to 1 over squared 2 plus i, 1 over squared 2. And this is cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. Similarly, for this one, it will be sine pi over 4 minus i sine pi over 4. Using the similar method, Use the Moore theorem, then we will have this is equal to cos pi plus i sine pi over 4 and cos pi over 4 minus i sine pi over 4 and the Moore theorem say that this is true if n is an integer. This will be equal to n pi over 4 plus i sine n pi over 4. This is true if n pi over 4 minus i sine n pi over 4 and therefore that is the answer that is part A uh, there are two methods to do that method number 1 1 minus cos sine theta plus i sine theta to the power of m we are using trigonometry. 1 minus cos will equal to 2 sine square theta over 2. Sine will equal to 2 sine theta over 2 cos theta over 2. The statement suggests that we should take out 2i sine theta over 2. From here, 2i sine theta over 2, I left with cosine theta over 2. Okay. From this, I have 2 sine theta, I left with another sine theta over 2. But I do not have i. If i plus i, I will have a negative. But this is positive, so it should be a negative i. Then the whole thing to the power of m. Then the answer is almost appear. So this will be m. Right. So using the Moore theorem, we can't do much for the first term. But this will be equal to cosine m theta over 2 minus i sine m theta over 2, provided that m is an integer. So, method 1, trigonometry identity. Now we will go to method 2, where you are using the Euler formula. First of all, we have to recognize that this it can be written as this one. Okay? And we have to recognize that this is actually equals to this is actually equals to e to the power of negative i theta now there is a trick on dealing with this that is we take out e negative i theta over 2 what will you get? if you take out this this is 1 so I need to have e i theta over 2 after you multiply you get back 1 minus this is negative i theta, this negative i theta over 2, so I still have negative i theta over 2. We will separate it. Using the Moore theorem on Euler formula, this one will give me e i m theta over 2, if m is integer. And for this, this will equal to cosine theta over 2 plus i sine theta over 2. 
where for this one it is cosine theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2. When you take the difference of these two, it will give you the difference will give you 2i sine theta over 2. So for this one, it will be equal to 2i sine theta over 2 to the power of m. And the last statement for this will be equal to this. And we are done. It is possible to write this in terms of a plus b i tangent theta, where a b are some real number. 1 over 1 plus e 2i theta is equal to 1 plus e 2i theta to the power of negative 1. Using the trick that we have just now, we will take out e i theta. So this will give me e i theta, this will give me negative e i theta. Both of it power negative 1. So this is e i theta power of negative 1. Using the Mach theorem, this will be equal to negative i. And for this one, cos plus i sine, this is cos minus i sine. For this one, what I have is this is uh, cos theta minus i sine theta. And for this one, 2 cosine negative 1. So it means that this is over 2 cosine theta. This is cos theta plus i sine theta minus i sine theta. And therefore, it is equal to half minus half i tangent theta. The real part will be equal to a half and the imagined part for this will be equal to negative half tangent theta.